Well, all I can tell you is Jesus was never a Christian, Muhammad was never Islamic, and Buddha was never a, a Buddhist. Uh, I am not a Chrislamic, Chrislam. I am Daniel, the latter day Daniel, and I am the messenger unto Israel that they have inherited all mankind, Isaiah 54, 3, and that he has given them a new name, Isaiah 62, 2, because I am who I'm claiming to be. So now I have a, a word of the Islamic dove's technicalities. And this vision has been written plainly on the tablets, so all those who readeth it may run. So uh, I'm going to now give a message to Islam and to followers thereof. And they've been waiting for a uh, salesman, by the way. I'm filming from my office. Uh, I, I sell meat and fish. Uh, door to door, and I'm a merchant, and uh, they have called me the Mahdi, and that's exactly who I am. So technically, the Muslim people have always been right in believing that the Lord God has never had any sons. Jesus Christ was not a son of God. End of the story. That's it. I have all authority under the heavens. Uh, I am Shiloh, whose eyes are red and dull of wine. I am alcoholic. I am the bringer of the vision of God, uh, whose soul is not upright, and my, I've been transgressed by wine, but the just will live by my faith. And this vision has writ been written plainly on the tablets, so all those who are reading it may run, because I'm the strong and mighty one, line by line, precept by precept, uh, and I am as a destroying storm, because I'm pulling down distortional. Muhammad said this, people of Islam, he said, the day is coming, there'll be no more in the hadith left of my people, uh, left of uh, the Quran, except its outward form, and my people will belong to another that sounds like Islam. And uh, he said it will happen because of a book proving God's mercy, Jeremiah. That's why he said there will never be another important person. He was right about that, uh, because Jeremiah was the kingdom age prophet, the only one needed to tear down all distortionality, Jeremiah 110 all the kingdoms of man's imaginations that are have gotten crooked. And for that reason, the Lord has now dropped his plumb line for his restoration of Acts 3.21. Otherwise, Isa Yeshua, Jesus, is kept in reserve in heaven and cannot even return. But uh, who was Jesus? He was God in the flesh. People, uh, listen to me for one second. If you have a bunch of mercury, it can be in three, four little balls, and it's mercury or you put it all together in one big lump, and it's mercury. In between, it's mercury. No matter what, it's mercury. It does not change its essence. Isa, Yeshua, Jesus, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Emmanuel means God in the flesh, God with us. That is what Isaiah revealed. And Isaiah, uh, his writing has not been corrupted Islamics, it is provable because of the Dead Sea Scrolls. They have found uh, scrolls of Isaiah, and it was never corrupted. So that is the utter gospel truth. So God in the flesh is Isa Yeshua, Jesus, the living word of God. And so uh, the, the truth is, he is the good shepherd arising over all the flocks of man. He is the Lord God of the of the religious and the non-religious. All those keeping their love light on. Watch, please, uh, the video called uh, The Deathbed Confession of Anton LaVey. Uh, and Anton was the writer of the Book of Satan, and he formed the Church of Satan. And on his deathbed, God introduced himself as love, because all calling upon the name of the Lord are saved even the writer of the Book of Satan. And uh, Anton was like, Oh my God, what did I do? What did I do? It was too late. He couldn't uh, unwrite and unmake the Church of Satan. But know that likewise, the Messiah, Isa, Yeshua, Jesus, has never been a lamb. He's never been a lamb. He's never been a lion. The Holy Spirit's never been an eagle, or he's never been a dove. Not really. That's just all metaphoric. And so neither was he ever a son of God, but he was God in the flesh, whether people want to believe that or not. And he said all sin will be forgiven, except all sin will be forgiven, except blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which is just to let your love light go out. 
people, uh, we got to have our love alive as a little child. We got to stop and smell the roses, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, because the truest truth is that our Lord Jesus Christ, he is coming back according to his word, but it's not going to be like people think. He's going to come in victory. That is what is going to happen because he has cut time short uh, or otherwise no flesh would be saved. And he's cut time short by sending forth his message from his anointed messenger unto Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, Satanism. I'm the messenger to all people of the world. No one is watching me. That's a whole different story because no one believes uh, that these are days as Noah, imminent destruction, chicken little with a, a heaven going to fall on our heads. But it's true. And people better believe the word of God and start getting along in the sandbox, look at our commonalities, because the Lord Jesus Christ knew he was sending us our unity. Because he's saying to everyone, the everlasting govern, uh, covenant has been over all mankind. He's saying, I will be your God to all the Islamics and to all the Christians and all the atheists and to all the Satanists, to everyone who manages to keep their love light on. I don't give a damn what you believe. If you're a loving being of light, then you are a loving being of light. And those who love are born again of God and know him because he is love. First John 4, 7. So uh, realize now that his titles of the Lamb of God and the Son of God are only titles. Is he the Son of God? Hell yeah, that's his name. <laughs> Was he a Son of God? No, but that's his name. So regardless of the inaccuracy that those names reflect unto those that don't have a true understanding, it doesn't matter. That's his name. Unfortunately, the, the title of son also brings forth the idea that the Lord Jesus Christ Almighty was begat from Allah. There's a doctrine of secession in Christianity that Father God has a throne and uh, Jesus has a throne right next, sitting on his right hand side. That's not true. There is only one embodied Lord, and that was Christ in the flesh. And God has never had a body. How could he, uh, Lord God, who has never had a body, how could he have a throne? Come on. Uh, the truth is, people have just been cutting uh, themselves with the sword of the Spirit and cutting each other. Uh, and it's become a loveless world where it's developed into something that's not even about love. It's developed into something, an uh, argument over which end of the egg to open like the Lilliputians fought over for hundreds of years in Gulliver's travels. So know that uh, it's time that his supernatural birth uh, must be analyzed. And uh, so realize now that no sons for Allah is true. And by the way, Islam, the Lord Isa Yeshua, Jesus, the word of God that Muhammad foretold would come back, he has now decreed the living word and he is alive and he is returning praise the lord he has decreed that the former title of allah is now a name that he is now embracing so be feel free to keep calling him allah because he is adonai he is elohim he is the many he is the single he is the multiplicity of singularity he is one and he is love and those who love are born of him and born again. And because he is love, and because they are one, Isa is love, God is love. And because of that, for God so loved the world, it is accurate to say that our beloved love of the age is so loved the world that he gave his only begotten love. So whosoever would believe and love and follow after the Spirit and walk with the Spirit would be under no condemnation. That's what walking with the Spirit is means is to keep your love light on as a little child so praise the lord it's time to realize that the babe in the manger he wrapped himself uh that wrap was wrapped in swaddling clothes was allah himself incarnate just as isaiah prophesied that emmanuel would be god with us therefore allah wasn't the father of himself just as the lawless one that has been revealed in this world uh, the Antichrist wannabe Morgan Knight, uh, more official of Revelation uh, uh, Revelation 13, said that he would die by a sword. This guy is a sword swallower, a freak show. Who dies by a sword anymore? That's obsolete. No one uses swords. 
anymore. Uh, so realize that uh, things are not as they seem, and the revealed uh, false prophet of this world, his name is Dr. David Owar, O-W-U-O-R, of repent and uh, prepare the way. He's the false Elijah of this world who's claiming that he's the two witnesses. I'm not one of the two witnesses. That's a different Elijah. No one will ever give me the time of day to understand, but uh, that's the revelation of the two witnesses, uh, that the two lampstands are the two witnesses because the fullness of God's power is with them because they're resurrected, the originals. Uh, I am the Elijah of Zechariah 3, 4, and 5, and a different set of two witnesses. My sister Trudy and I both, God lit a lamp for seven, eight minutes independently of each other, and I wrote by lamp seven, eight minutes, God lit that candle, one candlestick, not two. It's a whole different vision, and you cannot put them together, and people always have because they haven't known any better. But, uh, and the one candlestick is not the power of the two, uh, like the fullness of the power. So it's apples and oranges always have been. It's totally uh, uh, mutilating the word of God with faulty interpretations. So know that uh, it's time to understand that if a drop of mercury is, is, is tapped, it'll form new droplets that can easily be brought back together in a unified form. And so too has it been with Elohim, the many. And that's why even Hinduism, they have seen many gods, and Elohim means many. And we uh, Muslims have always said, God can't be God in the flesh. But that is what prophecy does prove. So uh, we, we just need to get along with the sandbox because Jesus said that uh, and whether or not he was or wasn't, it does not matter. That's why Jesus said, all sin will be forgiven. Even sin against me, he said. Even sin against God, but not against the Holy Spirit who's living within us, who is love. Uh, all, uh, none of our righteousness, all of our righteousness is as filthy rags in comparison to his transcendent love. So it's time that we come alive and realize that just as Adam and Eve weren't really children of the Most High, uh, yet we are, we are angels of God, and we are angels in the flesh. The glory of his latter house is greater than that of the former, and the first are last, the last are first. Isa said in John 10, we are gods, and that is what he meant, is because we are angels in the flesh. And the Bible predicted in the latter days that the revelation that all the creation has been groaning with great expectation over would come, and that revelation I have given because I am the uh, Mahdi, or I am Elijah. Uh, and uh, if you're waiting for a Mahdi by the name of Muhammad, that will never be, I guarantee you. But realize that uh, Muhammad was right often, and he was wrong a couple times. And so has everyone been wrong. I've been wrong many times. And every, every, uh, every word of scripture is infallible, uh, and, and or fallible rather, if we are to uh, uh, misinterpret it, then it's all wrong. And so praise the Lord that uh, the, the name children of God is just another inaccurate name with common usage. Are we children? Uh, in a sense, we are beings of light. We are his hosts. We are made in the image of God uh, to be evermore uh, we are eternal beings and he has now given his kingdom age covenant to all mankind saying I will be your God of all the Islamics and all the Christians and all the Jews and you will be my people of love and my angels of light and I will forgive your sin all of it and I will never remember it if people uh, if he remembered our sin Iblis had to be removed because he was uh, Satan. He was the uh, accuser of the brethren day and night, saying, hey, you want to know about those guys? Blah, 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 blah. They're sinners. Blah, 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 blah. Day and night before the Lord accusing us, but, uh, all the people, because he hated us, because we were created without a greater shining than the former, because we were made right into the larva instead of being made right into a spiritual being to start off with. So realize that the souls of loving people are born again through love, 
uh, of Christ, and uh, Christ was was slain before the foundation of the earth. He was slain, and he has risen, people. And uh, so Muhammad was wrong about that. I'm sorry, but uh, the truest truth is, and and people look at it this way. Because I'm addressing Islam, I'm going to say this to you. I'm with David Wood on much of what he preaches. And uh, there are many errors in the Islamic book. It is a very beautiful book. And I have um, all the praise of Islam is at my channel. The 99 names of, uh, of Muhammad have all been recorded here at the most beautiful uh, in the most beautiful praise. No one's listening to them. And Islam, I invite you to find them. Just uh, go to YouTube and put in Daniel Owsley Islam, and a bunch of stuff will come up. But the truth is this, that I stand with David Wood, and uh, I agree that this was off, this was off, but I don't condemn anybody over it. Now, he is an apologist. That is his job. He does a great job. And most Islamics are very aware of the name of David Wood. He's the very best Islamic uh, um, apologist that probably will ever be. And he's looking at my channel and my uh, teachings uh, to find fault with me, but he will not never be able to do it. But the truth is, is this, people, that the praise of Muhammad is the best that's ever been written, aside from one. And uh, it's time to quit being religious and agree to get, uh, agree to disagree. Know this, that we are angels in the flesh, and it was foretold that revelation would come. Why? Because all of creation has been groaning with great expectations for it. It was foretold to come in the latter days. And wouldn't it make sense that the, the real Elijah in this world was being ignored? as Isaiah 49, 4 predicted, and Isaiah 41 predicted. Uh, Israel, uh, I've been telling them, hey, you've inherited all mankind. You are now Islam. Isaiah 62, 2, they ain't paying no attention. They ain't listening to nothing. And I'm telling them, that, hey, you've inherited all mankind. Isaiah 54, 3, and Islam is their new name. Isaiah 62, 2, they're not paying no attention. No one is. So it was foretold that the real Elijah in this world would be ignored. But praise God, and within a time, times and half a time, things are going to start turning around, you'll see. But the truth is this, that the name of Isa Yeshua, Jesus, his pre-existent names, one of them was Angel of the Lord. And the Angel of the Lord appeared to Manoah, the father of uh, Samson, and uh, to Harold. Samson's uh, appointment as a judge over the house of Israel. And again, the angel of the Lord stood in the midst of the fiery furnace of uh, uh, the th three uh, Hebrews that were thrown in by uh, the king into the great fiery furnace. And then there was suddenly a fourth man in the fire, one like the Son of Man. Uh, and he was the angel of the Lord, Isa Yeshua, Jesus. Does it matter if you believe that Jesus is the risen lamb? Hell no. Because all sin will be forgiven you. Even if it's against Jesus, he said, he said, Yeshua, you're, you're Messiah too. He's my Messiah, he's your Messiah. He's the Messiah of the Buddhists. And there has never been a greater Bible prophet than Buddha. Buddha prophesied the resurrection scars in his hands, his feet, his, his brow, his side. 700 years before Christ came, and Buddha negated everything that he preached. Uh, insofar as Buddhism, he said, people, forget the old ways, forget everything I've taught, only look to the one that's coming. He is the only one that's going to redeem mankind and save us from our sin. And praise God, he was slain before the foundation of the earth for all. So put on your love tie and realize that the truest truth is it really doesn't matter whether you believe the truth or not, but if you do, you're going to be a little bit more appreciative of uh, what the Lord has really done for you. And the truth is, if, if you want to believe uh, the uh, blasphemy, and if you want to believe heresy, just believe that he really was just an angel of the Lord. That's okay. 
he's another, uh, I don't know, uh, like Michael the Archangel, uh, just an angel like us. If you want to believe that, fine, but he was an anointed one. That's not the truth, but it doesn't, it's not worth arguing about. And uh, so the David would, I hate to tell David, but his job is now obsolete because the truest truth has come if anybody will ever pay any attention to it. Because in the days when you hear those words, I will be your God, you will be my people. Hebrews 8, Paul wrote that it would all be obsolete, all faith on earth. He said the same thing as Muhammad. My people will belong to another. This sounds like for Islam, but it happened because of a book proving God's mercy, Jeremiah. And uh, Muhammad said that uh, it would remove distortionality. So that is what I'm giving you now. So never the, forget the words of Isaiah, which prophesied clearly that Jesus Christ uh, the Na of Nazareth, he would always have the title of the everlasting Father as he shines within the Lord God's eternal oneness, which is totally indisputable according to the Bible's fullness of truth. But it's time the Christians and Islamics will embrace each other in love because the truest message of the Quran and the Bible is love. So I urge one and all of you to stop and smell the rose of Sharon, who is your word of God returning as all of our Messiah, and realize that when the Lord came, it was so that we would trust in the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our passion. He doesn't want anyone in this world not to be passionate. If you really are a believer in the love that he brought into this world, and you're not passionate about it, you have not been born again, you have a form of godliness, and you take everything for granted, and you're just, you're just a, a darkened soul who has no understanding of love. But if, if you're uh, deaf and dumb and blind, and, uh, but you're still a person of love, and your, your heart is alive and passionate uh, about love, uh, you'll be okay if you don't believe nothing. But to be, uh, to be without passion, it's a death sentence for you. Because that is the spiritual suicide that the Word of God said many times. Many are going to say, Lord, Lord, and going to say, I don't know. So you're either a person of love or you don't want to be. And if you don't want to be, you're walking on a real slippery slope in these days as Noah. So unto uh, Islam, I love you. And someday maybe someone will even believe the truth that I'm preaching because our Lord wants to remove the greed of death from us because he, he has sent one who is as greedy as hell and can never be satisfied as I embrace all people of the earth unto our risen good shepherd over all the flocks of man, that over the house of Israel, the house of Muhammad, the house of all houses. So until next time, I love you all.